So you're at the week nine AP Physics One content review session. Um, if you haven't already muted your mic and um, turned off your webcam, please go ahead and do so. It just makes the system work better. Make sure that you unmute if you have questions. We are recording this session and we're gonna post that recording to the A Plus College Ready Science YouTube channel. This is the last of our weekly content review sessions for the semester. Most of you have returned back to in-person school. So we're going to, uh, to, to cut this off at this point, but please join us again in March and April for our AP exam review series. Also, if you need other resources like videos to help you through the next few units, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. It's A Plus College Ready Science. We've got videos and practice problems with solutions on every unit in, AP, in the AP Physics 1 course. All right, so let's get started today. Today we're gonna review dynamics and hopefully get you guys ready for um, your exam on unit two. So here's a sample problem. We have a, um, a block of mass M sliding down an inclined plane with a constant speed. All right, so that's an important word, constant speed. That means zero acceleration. That also means zero net force acting down the plane. All right, so the angle is the angle theta. That's the angle of the incline. Um, and it also tells us, um, it doesn't say it's a frictionless incline. So we've got to assume there's probably some friction there. First of all, we want to know what is the X component of the gravitational force. I like to call that the parallel component, the component of the weight parallel to the incline plane. Whenever I do an incline problem like this, the first thing that I do is go to the center of the box or mass and I draw down a vector straight down and that represents the weight or mg, that's the gravitational force. I then take that component, that, that weight rather, and I break it into two components, one perpendicular to the incline and one parallel to the incline. I'm gonna call this F parallel and this F perpendicular. Remember that if this angle is theta, this angle right here is also theta. These are um, similar triangles. So to find my components, I could use the cosine to find the parallel component. I could say the cosine of that angle theta right here is equal to the adjacent side, which is F parallel over the hypotenuse, which is my weight, mg. And that means that F parallel equals mg cosine theta. I could do the same thing for the perpendicular component. And I did that all backwards, guys. This should be the perpendicular component. I mislabeled my picture here. This is the perpendicular component. So the perpendicular component is mg cosine theta. The uh, parallel component, which is the side opposite the angle, I'm gonna use sine to find that. So sine theta equals the opposite side, which is f parallel over the hypotenuse, mg, which means that f parallel equals mg sine theta. All right. well, the x component, according to our diagram here, is the one parallel to the incline. So that's going to be our f parallel, which is this force right here, mg sine theta. So it's looking like answer B is correct on 14. 15, what is the y component of the gravitational force? Um, that's the perpendicular component. That component is going to be equal and opposite to the normal force. So we're about to answer two questions with this one right, this is one answer here. That's the perpendicular component of our weight, mg cosine theta. That's how hard the box due to gravity pushes into the surface, which means it's also how hard the surface pushes up on the box. So mg cosine theta is our answer on 15. It's also our answer on 16. 17 wants to know what is the kinetic friction force acting on the block? Well, remember, this thing's moving at a constant speed, which means there's no net force. This force is pushing the block down the plane. That's the only force acting along the plane uh, coming from the box, which means there must be an equal and opposite force from friction acting up the plane. So if the parallel component of the weight is mg sine theta, the frictional force must be must also be mg sine theta. Remember that the frictional force 
is mu times n. We're looking for the, um, well, we're just looking for the friction force. So we just got it. So it's gonna be mg uh, sine theta. Uh, now that's one way to get it, but notice that's not a choice here. mg sine theta is not a choice. So the other way to come up with it is to use our friction equation. I like to call this the fun equation. Frictional force equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Which means in this case, um, our coefficient of friction, our normal force is mg cosine theta, equal and opposite to the perpendicular component of the weight. So that's going to put us at answer A. So that is also going to be equivalent in this case to mg sine theta. All right, that's question set number one. All right, here's question set two, very similar problem. Um, this time though, we know the mass of the block is five kilograms. It's at an incline of 37 degrees. Um, it's got a constant acceleration of 5.6 meters per second square, which means there is a net force. Um, the coefficient of friction between the block and the incline surface is 0.5. Use the diagram to answer questions 19 through 22. So first of all, it's essentially asking us to do a free body diagram for this diagram. So remember that the weight of this block acts straight down. That's our weight or mg. The um, normal force pushes up on the surface and it's gonna be per perpendicular um, to the incline. So something like this. And then the friction is gonna be opposite of motion. Well, the motion is down the plane, which means the frictional force has to be up the plane, something like that. So if you look at our choices, it's looking like uh, C um, is the choice that shows our weight going down, our normal force going perpendicular to the surface and our frictional force going up the plane opposite of motion. Next, we wanna know what's the normal force on the block. So I'm gonna go back to my diagram here. I'm gonna draw in the weight. I'm gonna, again, break this into one component perpendicular to the surface and one parallel. I'll call this F perpendicular and this F parallel. Remember now, this is theta, so is this angle. And in this case, theta is 37. I also know the weight because the mass here is five kilograms, which means the weight, this side of my triangle is 50 newtons, mg, five kilograms times g. So to find the perpendicular component of the weight, which is equal and opposite to the normal force, I can use um, cosine in this case. I'm gonna say the cosine of my angle, 37, equals the adjacent side, F perpendicular, over the hypotenuse, the weight, 50 newtons. So if I go the cosine of 37 times 50, I end up with 39.93, which in this case, they round it off to 40, 40 newtons. What is the frictional force between the block and the inclined plane? Well, there's a couple different ways we could find that. One way we could find it is use the friction equation. So our coefficient of friction um, in this case is 0.05 and our normal force was 40 newtons. So multiply that out, 40 times 0.05 and we end up with two newtons. Now, another way we could have found it is thought about the forces. So we know that we have an acceleration down the plane of 5.6, which means there has to be an, uh, a net force down the plane of MA. So the net force is gonna be the mass of the box, five kilograms, times the acceleration of the box, 5.6 meters per second square. Um, 
that's going to give us a net force of, let's see, uh, of 28 newts. And that's down the plane. All right, well, we know that the pair, let's find the parallel component of the weight, first of all. So if we go back up here and we find the parallel component of the weight, we can use sine to do that. Sine of theta equals F parallel over the hypotenuse or 50. Remembering that theta is 37. So if we go the sine of 37 times 50, we end up with um, 30. So F parallel is 30 newtons. So remember that our net force is equal to the sum of all the forces acting on the object, which in this case would be the F parallel acting down the plane, the friction acting up the plane. Let me make a little space here so I have a place to write. So again, let's go F net equals F parallel plus frictional force. Um, we just figured out a minute ago that the frictional force is 28 Newtons. I'm gonna call that negative because it's acting opposite of motion. The parallel component of our weight is 30 Newtons. And that means the net force has to be the sum of those, which is gonna be two Newtons. So either way we did it, we came up with two Newtons. There are two different ways to get to the same point. All right, question 22, the coefficient of static friction between the block and the incline plane is 0.4 and theta equals 25 degrees. So we lowered the angle here. The book is placed on the incline plane. The book will. All right, well, we know the parallel component of the weight is 30 Newtons. So let's figure out what the friction force is here at 25 degrees. So if this is 25 degrees, we'll draw in our weight, draw in our perpendicular or parallel components. Let's find F perpendicular. So cosine 25 equals F perpendicular over the hypotenuse, which is gonna be the weight. Again, that's 50. So the cosine of 25 times 50 gives us 45 Newtons for a perpendicular component. Right, so now let's find the frictional force acting on the object. Use the fun equation. Um, this is gonna be our normal force. So we're gonna end up with 45 Newtons right here times 0.4 right there. So 45 times 0.4. That gives us a frictional force of 18 Newtons. Let's find the parallel component of the weight now, the part of the weight that's pushing the box down the plane. And that would be this side of our triangle right here. And we can find that using sine, sine 25 equals opposite F parallel over the weight, which is 50. Um, and that means that F parallel is gonna be the sine of 25 times 50, which is 21. 21.1 newtons, we'll leave it at 21. So we have that much force pushing the box down the plane. We have this much force um, trying to stop the box from moving. That means there's a net force of three newtons pushing the box down the plane. So that's telling me that the box is going to move and it's gonna accelerate. that tells me that C is gonna be the correct answer. All right, that's question set two. Now let's look at three. We saw, we've seen several examples of problems like this in the last couple of weeks. They like to ask these kinds of questions on the AP exam. A system of two blocks is accelerated by an applied force of magnitude F on a frictionless horizontal surface the tension in the string behind, between the blocks is. When you have this kind of problem, first of all, you're gonna use um, this, the applied force is the net force because there's no 
there's no friction. That's the net force acting on the system. So we're gonna go F net of system equals mass of system times acceleration of system. So we're gonna find the system acceleration. So A system is gonna be equal to the net force acting on the system divided by the total mass of the system. So in this case, that total net force is just F because there's no friction. And the mass of the system is three kilograms plus five kilograms, eight kilograms. So the system acceleration is F over eight. Now, what we're looking for though, is the tension in this string. This string provides the net force acting on just the three kilogram block. So now let's just think about that three kilogram block. So we'll say that F is equal to the tension, which is equal to mass, three kilograms, times the acceleration of that box. Well, if the system accelerates at this rate, the whole, every box accelerates at that same rate. So the acceleration is F over eight. Kilograms cancel, which means the net force acting on box three is equal to three times F over eight. That's also the tension in the string, three eighths F. All right, this next box. A student pulls a wooden box with a rough horizontal, um, along a rough horizontal floor at a constant speed by means of a force P as shown to the right. Which of the following must be true? Constant speed. That means that there's no vertical net forces, which means that this force and this force have to be equal. That also means there's no um, horizontal forces which means that this force and the horizontal component of this force have to be equal. Now here's the deal. That's only gonna work though, if this force is bigger than the other two. The, the upward force, there's some upward force on that. It's not all horizontal, which means that P has to be greater than F. The horizontal component of P has to be equal to F, but the total force of P has to be greater than F. So P greater than F, N equals W. It's looking like answer B. All right, final question on this slide set is 25. And in this problem, so we've got a boy pushing a sled. Um, we wanna know the normal force acting on the sled. So typically the normal force is just equal but opposite to the weight if we're on flat ground. But in this case, there's a component of this applied force that pushes the, the sled against the ground. So we really have two things pushing the sled against the ground. We have the weight of the sled and we have this component of the applied force. So the normal force has to push back equal and opposite to the sum of those two. So we need to figure out what this component is. And to do that, just use sine. So let's say the sine of theta equals the opposite side. We'll just call it F perpendicular for right now over the hypotenuse, which is just F, which means that F perpendicular equals the applied force times the sine of theta. That means the normal force has to be equal to this plus the weight of that sled, mg. So F sine theta plus mg it's looking like an answer on this one is D. All right, that's question set three. All right, question set four is sort of similar. So in this case, we have a block of mass M pulled along a horizontal surface, again, at constant speed by a force of F applied, which acts at an angle of theta with the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is mu K the normal force exerted on the block by the surface is. Okay, so remember that normally, the normal force is equal but opposite to the weight. But in this case, we're pulling up on the box. Um, so that means less, not all of the weight is actually pushing against the ground. So in this case, our normal force is gonna be equal to the weight minus 
the vertical component, which we'll just call F perpendicular for right now. So we need to figure out what F perpendicular is. We can use the sine to find this component right here, and it'll be the sine of theta equals F perpendicular over the applied force. So that means that the F perpendicular is equal to F app times sine theta, which means our normal force is gonna be equal to the weight, mg, that's the weight, minus F, F app sine theta. So we're looking at um, choice B as being the correct answer on this one. All right, 28, similar thing. Still moving at a constant speed. Um, we've got the coefficient of friction. We wanna know how much frictional force there is. So here, let's just use the fun equation. Frictional force equals mu n. So our mu is mu k and our n we just figured out is uh, equal but opposite to that. So mg minus f app sine theta. And if we look at that, that looks looking like it's probably answer choice B. All right, that's it for question set four. So now let's look at question set five. So here we have a modified Atwood machine. These are always asked about on AP exams. And it tells us we have a block of mass 4M can move without friction on a horizontal table. This block is attached to another block of mass M by a string over a frictionless pulley, so no friction. If the masses of the string and the pulley are negligible, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the descending block? Well, what you've got to know in this case, the, the net force acting on this system is essentially the weight of that block. So F net of the system equals mg. That's the system net force. So let's think about the whole system now and let's use F equals F net equals ma. Let's work this for the system. Um, let's go ahead and solve this out for a. So a is going to be equal to F net over m. So for the system the net force is mg and the mass of that system is five times m, 4m plus 1m, which essentially means the acceleration is gonna be g over five, or about two meters per second squared, because g is 10 meters per second squared. All right, um, this question was not a good question, so we're not gonna even attempt this one. It's not very well written. Let's go ahead and look at 34. Three objects can move along a straight level path. The graphs below show the position X of each of the objects plotted as a function of time. The net force on the object is zero in which of the cases? We've got to remember that when there's a net force of zero, then there's also an acceleration of zero. Remember that in a position time graph, which is what we're looking here on all of these, the slope of a position time graph is velocity. Here, that slope is constant. It's a nice, steady diagonal line. If the slope is constant, that means the velocity is constant. That means A is equal to zero, which also means F net equals to zero. So this is a possible answer. This is an answer to the question. In this case, we have a slope of zero which means this thing's not moving. It has zero velocity. Therefore, it also has zero acceleration. It's not moving. This one also has A equals zero. That looks like a good answer. This one, on the other hand, our line is curved. That means the velocity is constantly changing. By definition, a change in velocity over time is acceleration. So this one has acceleration, um, which means it has a net force. So this one is not an answer. So it's looking like our answer to this question, one and two only, because those two both show constant velocity, 
zero acceleration, therefore zero net force. All right, question set six. So here we have two blocks uh, on a flat surface, uh, mass M, mass 2M. This is a frictionless surface, that's important. We're applying a force of F on block A, and we're gonna use that to answer two questions. So first of all, we're gonna find the acceleration of the system. So the system acceleration, uh, we'll find this way. So we'll find that F net of the system is equal to the mass of the system, times the acceleration of the system, which means acceleration of the system equals F net of the system divided by mass of system. Well, since there's no friction, the net force acting on this system is just that applied force of F. And the mass of the system is 1M plus 2M or 3M. That's the acceleration of the system, F over 3M. C. So next we want to know what force is exerted by A on block B. So A pushes on B and that, that force is the net force acting on block B. So let's calculate um, just, just the net force acting on block B. F net on B is going to be equal to the mass of B, which is 2M, times the acceleration of B. Well, if the system accelerates at F over 3M, both blocks also accelerate at that rate. So that's the acceleration of every piece of the system, F over 3M. Well, here the M's cancel. So the net force acting on block B is two thirds of F. That force is applied by A onto B. So that's the answer we're looking for here, two thirds of F, which is choice D. All right, that's it for question set six. Got one more question set. Um, this one, again, a modified Atwood machine. Three blocks this time though. Um, notice that block two is more massive than block three, which is more massive than block one. So the heaviest of the three blocks is on the table. What's the acceleration of block M2? This is another one of those modified Atwood machines where we're gonna have to, first of all, figure out the net force acting on the system. Typically the net force would be the, the weight of the hanging object. But in this case, there's something hanging on each side. So the net force is gonna be the difference in the weights of those two. The problem tells us up here that three is bigger than one, which means the system's gonna accelerate this way. So the net force acting on this system, since there's, since there's no friction, is a mass of three times G, the weight of that one, minus mass of one times G. So now let's go to uh, Newton's second law. So the acceleration of the system is gonna be the net force acting on the system divided by the mass of the system. The net force acting on the system we just figured out is M3G minus M1G. Well, the mass of the system is just the sum of all the masses, M1 plus M2 plus M3. That's the acceleration of the whole system. It's also the acceleration of this box and this box and this box. And that answer choice it looks like with the G factored out is choice C. All right, we're gonna save the, the attention question here for another time. Uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, what I hope you gain from today and what I want you to make sure you know how to do before AP exam and hopefully before um, your in-class exam, incline plane problems are always gonna be on the AP exam. They pretty much always work the same way. These type problems where you have a frictionless service and an applied, um, applied force, you're gonna see those in lots of different applications. Modified Atwood machine problems. You gotta know how to do, do those, whether it's just one hanging object or two. 
All right, remember today is our last content review session for the semester. Make sure you join us again in March and April. We will have a long list of AP Physics 1 AP exam review sessions starting in early March. All right, hope that helped.